about um, geometric figures. Figures. So that's a figure is something that can be put together. We're describing maybe a 3D or two-dimensional figure. Um, it's a lot of, when we get into geometry, we talk a lot about shapes, like triangles, squares, circles, and all these things are made up of, of these pieces. Um, and so I want to talk a little bit about that today. Your simple, most basic is a point. A point is what it, what it is, what it, a point is exactly what it, what it says it is, right? A point is a point. There's really not much to talk about. Does it have much other than the fact that it's talking about a, a specific, we can maybe say it's talking about a specific location. That's what this, this thing does. That's what a point does. It gives you location. It helps you direct your eyes to um, a certain part of the figure. So let's say I have a square and I have a point here. And most points are kind of labeled by, we're going to use the word labeled a lot, by a certain letter. It could be P, A, Q, whatever. And so let's call this point, point B here. So what a point does, it talks about a specific location, it's one dimensional, and you're just looking at, okay, it's, it's directing, directing us to this. Now this point may be made up or be part of two different line segments and whatnot. There's more to it once you go into it. But, you know, right now, you could say here, we're in the 200 wing in room, in room 202. So we could even say that here at Sarah, we're at a specific point. We're in a location. And when you guys are on your phones and you're mapping, you always have that that point that you're talking about, right? So this is this is like everything that's coming into play here. Um, next thing we're gonna talk about is lines. Now line, line segment, and race, they're all kind of related. Um, I can make up a line segment and a ray out of a line, and I'll show you that, but basically a line is made up of at least, at least two points. You need two points to make up a line. Can I have, can I have three on that line? Of course, yeah, I could have four. I could have as many points, but it needs to be made up of two points. And here's why, if, if, um, you know, I have a line through one point, can I also make another line through that same point? And what happens is I'm not really determining a specific direction. So what this, what this second point does is telling us, okay, this is the direction we're going. It would be, again, uh, and I can talk a lot about mapping here, if, if I want to send you in a certain direction or tell you to stay in a certain, on a certain line, I would say and have to give you two points um, to kind of give you which street or direction you're going. Now, we're talking about labeling, right? So in each of these, I'm going to bring up some labeling to deal with it. So let's say, let's say I have three, three letters here. We'll you just use A, B, C, okay? In order for me to and again, what's this, what this is doing is, is it's pointing you to, or directing you to certain parts of the figure. So for instance, this intersecting lines. When you label a line, you use both letters you're talking about, or you're trying to direct your attention to, and you put, you put a symbol above it with two arrows. Two arrows, very important there. And, and, I'll, and you'll see why once we get the line segment erased. Anytime you're talking about a line, you're talking about the two arrows, you're labeling it. And what that's saying is that it's, it's infinite. The understanding is it's infinite in both directions. Meaning this line is never ending. It's going on forever, that's the idea. So you can take this line and extend it and include something else. Now, because I said AB, I'm talking about this line. Now, 
Does the order of the letters matter? Can I say, can I say B A? Are these are these the same? Is there anything wrong with that? No, no, it's the same. You can do that as long as you're using the letters you're talking about. So the line is kind of the easiest, one of the easiest to label. We're talking now. If I want to, if I want to bring up this line, I would just simply use A. And C, I would change the letter to C to now talk about this line. And where that's going to help you is when we get to get to maybe a triangle. And we're talking about triangles now. And, and I want to point you guys to a certain angle. And that angle is made up of a certain, a certain part. And so understanding this labeling and where we're looking at, that's kind of the purpose of this. Now, a line went infinitely in both directions. A segment, so if you're watching a TV show, they, they, if, and if you ever see on Netflix or whatever you're watching, you'll see, you'll see a line like this, right? And, and here is usually what? What's usually here? It's a, usually a commercial, right? All right, so you'll see that on some of your streaming, like Netflix or Amazon. Now, this, this part of the show is called a segment, right? It's a part of the show. It's a point where it started and ended. Start and end. It's a, it's a place that has a start and an end. It doesn't go infinitely in both directions. It is made up of, again, at least two. So I'm going to use this symbol here. This means least. At least two points. You can label it with letters. You can also have more than one point on that line, right? And, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, but in order to label it, here, you wanted to say it was going infinitely in both directions, so you gave the symbol as two arrows. Here, you're just simply, actually, we won't put dots here. Your symbol is just simple, simply a line. With no arrows on it. And by doing that and putting this line with no arrows, you're, you're saying that I'm, I'm simply talking about A, B as a segment. And you can say, just like a line, B, A. That's also a way you can say that. Now let's say I added two other points to it. A, B, E. Right? Now, if I say A, E, and I'm talking about that segment, Things are changing here because I'm, I'm talking about this as a start, start and an end. This is, is not the same, is not the same, like not equal to. Uh, an equal sign with a line through it means not equal to. That's just a side note there. Um, this would not be the same because I'm talking about this as a start and an end. So AB, AB I may be talking about the whole TV show where AD, I just may be talking about the first, the first scene. Okay, that's a line segment. Now when we get to array, we've had one that goes infinitely in both directions, we've had one that starts and ends in both directions, so let's look at one that starts or ends at one point, but goes infinitely in another direction. Uh, an example of this would be like just simply like a flashlight. Okay, it has a power source. Here's where it starts, and that light goes infinitely in one direction. Light is infinite; it goes on forever. It may um, lose its illumination based on like time and space and other things interfering with it. So. And what's important about labeling array, here's your star. Sometimes they call this, even though this looks like a star point, they may, or geometry, when I say geometry, or they, I'm talking about geometry, they may call this an endpoint, even though it looks like a star point. And let's say we're talking about A, B again. Here, has a star point and an endpoint. So, we use to label a line two arrows, a segment no arrows, and in this, one arrow. Now, is 
Are these two the same? Are these two the same? Do you think these two are the same? Raise your hand if you think yes. Raise your hand if you think no. Yeah, if you answered no, if you answered no, you'd be correct because here's the difference. This is saying this has an endpoint and a start point of A and is going in the direction of B. So the arrow is over the B telling you which direction this ray is going. This one has the arrow over A, so actually this is telling you about a figure that would have looked like this. Started at B and went in the direction of A. Here it's telling you A is the end point. Here it's telling you B is the end point. And that's a difference. Um, this is easy to label because the order of the letters doesn't matter. Same thing here. This is a little different because where you put the arrow over, when we practice this and we draw these things, so I'll ask, I'll ask uh, you guys, say, okay, we'll do some drawing. Draw um, B, I'll give you two different letters here. Draw M, M, O, and I'll go like this. My favorite is to get the arrow going. Go ahead. What do you call the starting, starting So, so um, to me, if I were creating geometry, I would call this a star point. But star point's not really a geometry term. Generally, the term is endpoint. So, we'll call this an endpoint, even though it looks like a start point. It's just a place where the line ends. There's an end here, okay? And and then this is going in the direction. So, yeah, we call it an endpoint, even though it looks like a start point. It's just a ge geometric term that has been applied to it. So when you when you're given that in, in any sort of like test, you'll see it as an endpoint. You won't see star point. That's why I kind of brought that up. Um, if I ask you to draw MO, a lot of what I'm going to get is I'm going to get this. This will be the drawing I'll get from a lot of students. I'm going to get this because they just they looked at the order of the letters, they drew it, but they didn't focus because the important point is to focus on on this end here, and the fact that this is going, starting at, starting or, or the end point is, is O, and it's going in the direction of M. This would be the correct. Now, I could draw this in any direction. Like, I could start with O here, and I could draw it like this, like this, like this. Doesn't matter. And you'll see this. You'll see this. Again, we talk about, like, geometric figures we're going to look at. You'll see this type of like figure, it may not be all the letter M's, it may be, you know, M, N, P, and Q, you'll see different letters, and then they want to talk about a certain angle, maybe this would be an angle of 150 degrees, and they'll start to use your rays, like two rays make up an angle, I don't want to get too far ahead here, but it's important to understand what the ray is and that it's going in a certain direction. Now the last one, these are all generally like two dimensional figures. The last one that we want to talk about is a plane. And this is kind of a tougher one to understand and look at. It's just, it's just simply a plane is a flat surface. So I drew it on an angle there so that you can see that it's three dimensional, right? You can, you can, I can even draw even more of an angle and you know, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll put, I'll make it look like a basketball court here. Right? So you can see that I'm trying to bring that three dimensional out. It's a flat surface that extends in all directions. Okay? That's a plane. Now, in order to have a plane, so let's say, let's say I put three points. These three points are on this plane, okay? These three points are on this plane. This is where you gotta dig in a little deep, follow along with what I'm saying here, okay? And I'll show you with a piece of paper shortly. So here's your three points. Yes, it's three points on the plane, but here's the problem. I can rotate 
this plane around, right? I could I could spin it around this these three points, and it never really stops. So it never talks about one exact surface. Like if I want to talk about the floor, okay, I need to use, if I want to talk about, I need to use what they call, this is a big word here, three non collinear points. Now this this word kind of defines what we're talking about just by the word you understand that co means the same, okay? Co means the same. Linear means on a line. So if something's non-collinear, they're not on the same line. So these points are, we'll say, non-collinear because I cannot draw one line through all three of those points. Now, if I took a piece of paper, and this is where the imaginative, the kind of, you got to open your brain up to seeing things a different way takes place. So here's, here's, here's a plane, right? Let's say I want to talk about this plane being right here, like on this angle, on this surface, right? This is all I want to talk about. I don't want the plane to be here or here. Problem is, problem is, can I, I can move this plane, or I can rotate this plane around, and still, still have those three points on the plane, right? But let's say I take, let's say I have this, this is a point, right? This is a point, this is a location, location in space. Let's say I take this, right, I have these, and we'll use two points, because we need three non-collinear points. So I'll take these two points. So are these two points on this plane right now? Yes. Yes, right? Is this third point on this plane? No. Is it touching it? No. So in order for me to stop, to get this plane and to touch this point, you notice that it stops here, right? And there's a third non-collinear point. But if I if I pull it away, is that point on there anymore? No. If I go past, right, it won't be either. The purpose of that third point, not on that line, is to basically stop this plane and make it to be a certain surface. So for instance, like this, this floor, I want it to be here, right? If I didn't have like the corners to be non-collinear points, this floor would just keep spinning. Right? It's the idea that if I had a chair, if I had a chair with three legs on it, okay, and I wanted to, I wanted it to stand, I would need it to be three non-collinear points, right? This way, that that chair would sit right down on the on the surface. It would sit right on the plane, and it wouldn't tip, right? It wouldn't tip. But if I took a chair, Miles, if I took a chair. I made a chair like this, and I just made all three, all three, uh, actually I don't think show that from the side. So let's say this is the chair, right? We're looking at it from the side, and I made all three legs on the one side right here in a line. What would happen to that chair once you sat down on it? It would fall, right? Because it's not on a plane, it's on a line. But if I want to, if I want to make this chair stand, I add that third non-collinear point, and now and now it's basically determining one surface. It's able to stop itself on one surface. That's why your desks are like that. Could I make a desk with three legs? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I could take the desk, I could take the chair, I'll put two in the front and one in the back. It may be a little wobbly in the back, right? If you're leaning side to side, but it would be able to, to make, what if I put just the three legs in the front Every time you sat down, the chair would fall. Actually, you couldn't even stand up this chair in, in the first place, right? Now, let's say you took that chair, Miles, right, with the three legs like this, right? And you sat on it. Could you make it stand? You could? What would you use? 
Let's say you took this chair and you want to sit on it. You need to sit and you take this chair. What could you do to make this chair? Out of what? Whose leg? Your own. You can add your own leg, right? You sit on it and now your foot's touching the floor, right? You put your foot on the floor. There's your third nonlinear point. So you can take that chair and then once your foot hits, okay, now we're, now we're connected. That's points, lines, line segments, planes. That's everything in the kitchen sink. There are other parts to it, but this is a good introduction. This is, this is going to be used to build everything else going forward, like a radius of a circle, an angle of a triangle, um, and then my favorite, and my favorite to have you guys draw, and if you get a, and when you get a free response, you'll be, you'll be responsible for something like this. And this is my favorite one right here, Miles. And I'm gonna bring this to life here. So when I make dashes, that's saying that this, this line is behind, behind the figure. Right? Actually, I, what I want to do is. I'll, I'll even draw that there, so that looks behind. And then we have two intersecting planes. And if you could look at it, make it three-dimensional, basically what I've created another figure that we'll use quite a bit. That's what that is. That's that right there. Three-dimensional. See it? So, so know that one. And we'll practice that as well. 